we have Jeremy Bentham and John Stuart Mill. So John Stuart Mill is a pupil of Jeremy Bentham. So John Stuart Mill somehow uh, improved the theory proposed by Jeremy Bentham. Bentham. So maybe I will talk about the theories in about ethics of utilitarianism in the second part of the topic about ethics of utilitarianism. So what was said by Jeremy Bentham? He said that nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. It is for them alone to point out what we ought to do as well as to determine what we shall do so for Jeremy Bentham our basis to our action what we are supposed to do is what we call pain and pleasure so this is our sovereign masters while John Stuart Mill, he said that the creed which accepts as the foundations of moral utility or the greatest happiness principle holds that actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. By happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain by unhappiness pain and the, pri the privation of pleasure so what do you mean by moral utility this is something connected to an actions that is useful which tends towards its purpose or goal or the greatest happiness principle meaning greatest happiness for the greatest number of people so that's what John Stuart Mill understands about greatest happiness principle and moral utility so that's it now let's talk about some varieties or types of utilitarianism First, we can distinguish between actual consequence utilitarians and foreseeable consequence utilitarians. Second, we can make distinctions between act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism. Now, to give us an example to see the distinction between these two, first let's talk about actual consequence utilitarian and foreseeable conse consequence utilitarians. So what's the difference between these two? In actual consequence utilitarians, the, the action, the basis of evaluation of moral rightness or moral wrongness of an action is based on the actual consequence of the action. While in the foreseeable consequence, the basis of evaluation of the moral rightness and wrongness of actions is uh, based on the foreseeable consequence of actions for example let us have an example example you rescued someone from drowning you were acting in good faith to save a drowning person but it's just so happened that happens that the person later became a mass murderer so since the person became a mass murderer the actual consequence that the would, would argue that in hindsight no, your perception about that the event after it happened that the act of rescuing the person was morally wrong no? you realize that what a wrong move of saving the person because he became or he or she became a mass murderer but in foreseeable consequences they would argue that by uh, looking forward it could not be foreseen that the person was a 
going to be a mass murderer so you cannot immediately make conclusions that when I'm going to save the person he will become a mass murderer so therefore for foreseeable utilitarianism the act of rescuing them was morally right you cannot you cannot uh, see that the person that you're going to save in good faith would become a mass murderer so that's why it cannot be the uh, you cannot really say that it is morally wrong to say to save the person no how about if the person became a saint you save the person and became a saint then all the more the actual consequence of totalitarianism would be the, the the act of saving the person would be morally right no? now let's talk about in the second this variety or types of utilitarianism between act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism in act utilitarianism you are going to choose which actions produces more good more pleasure pleasure or more happiness so uh, in this case the the problem is that in in practice it is impossible for everything that we might do has a potential effect on other people so it is really difficult and we need to examine more its consequence and pick the one with the best outcome so but we cannot really it's it's quite impossible but that's why we have rule utilitarianism no? so the focus on what general types of action is morally good or morally bad for example if stealing typically leads to bad consequence then stealing in general would be considered by rule utilitarianism to be wrong so that's that's why we have certain rules that we follow no? you have to follow the rules although there are really exemptions but that's how utilitarianism would see its consequence or effects that it becomes a rule that you have to follow okay in conclusion I would like to conclude with a question can the ends justify the means now what is the answer of ethics of utilitarianism so as far as it as utilitarianism is concerned the answer to this question is in the affirmative so perhaps the natural law or the other theories particularly the ontological uh, ethics would always uh, agree that the ends does not justify the means but here we can justify the means based on its end or goal or purpose because this theory is based its morality on its consequence so that's all for my discussion on this theory if you have questions or clarifications feel free to message me thank you for listening